Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to um, another episode. Today I am back with Daksh. So Daksh is the founder of Gobi Rogers and soft skill trainer, public speaker and a mentor. So thank you very much for being here. It's my pleasure to have you. Thank you. Hi Lakshya, thank you for, for, for inviting me. I think uh, the entire podcast series which you've had uh, is doing exceptionally well. I'm so happy that you know uh, younger guys like you are getting into something of this sort and to impact uh, the generation out there. So yeah, wishing you all the very best and thank you for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure and thank you for those wonderful things. Uh, yeah, so that would be great before beginning anything if you can speak about yourself and what you do and your, you know, whatever you do and all those things, that would be great. <clears throat> Right. So I happen to be a soft skills trainer. I train college students, young professionals across the country on group discussion, personal interview training, body language training, dressing sense. Uh, we do resumes. So resumes and CVs are uh, are uh, one of the things that we do. Uh, LinkedIn profiles, LinkedIn management, LinkedIn optimization, understanding LinkedIn, helping people grow on LinkedIn, brand strategy, stuff like that. So this is uh, something that I've been doing. I've been doing it uh, for over a year now, have impacted over 5,000 people across the country. Uh, I've also visited, uh, spoken with, spoken to, collaborated with 45 plus in institutions and organizations across the country. And yeah, I mean, so far so good. Uh, it's been a great journey so far. In fact, I've had uh, two of my own podcast series, uh, which are up on my Instagram. And yeah, this is a little bit about my about myself and uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So before, before starting into anything, I would just like into, you know, going into your, about your company. So basically what, what it's all about and how, how did you think of starting it? What, what was the reason? So Gobi Rogers is basically the formal entity of what I eventually do. So uh, it's basically one of the same thing. However, what Gobi Rogers is also doing what I am not, uh, that as an organization, we're also bridging the gap between the student community and the industry requirements. So we are into educational events. Uh, we have a team which uh, basically caters to the student requirements, young professional requirements. I mean, sure that, you know, people out there are getting the required uh, feedback. They're getting the right guidance towards their, their professional uh, career paths and, and aspects of life because this is something that the generation the younger generation gen z the millennials out there uh, are really struggling with uh, the majority of uh, the population is struggling with and this is something that we are catering to so yes uh, gobi rogers is also into something of that sort uh, again in like i said educational events and basically bridging the gap uh, between the student community and the industry requirement and it's going pretty well so the instagram page is also very very active you know we post a lot of things around uh, productivity around how to make the most of your time uh, we also cover people's stories so you know it's important to also bring out people and, and understand their perspectives to this as well so yeah it's it's been a good journey so far okay uh, coming to the coming to the coming to the question where you said that how did you think about it how did it come to you uh well i always want to do something of my own and this is something that i sort of uh, uh sort of was talking to myself about telling myself to get into in my second year okay. uh, back in college and uh, that is something that it started so the ignition you know started the spark came in there where I really wanted to do something of my own it wasn't that I wasn't looking at a job or anything I was more than happy to get into a job getting into the corporate world at the same time but also have my own little uh, project running uh, but yeah I mean things uh, sort of paved out uh, in my favor and I was able to sort of understand my strengths and where I can improve and I can impact people. And over a period of time, it also uh, reflected on how I was impacting people. I was getting a very good response. People really calling me uh, to, you know, their colleges and their their sessions and, and companies to, you know, sort of help them out. And that is where I sort of thought of getting into it professionally. And uh, so I, the Gooby Rogers came into existence uh, only last year on my date of birth, which is 19th of December. Uh, and I really wanted to incorporate it on the same date. Uh, because you know it just has a really different feel and connect to it so yes uh, we happen to share the same date of birth and uh, yeah it's been a great journey so far talking about the name so i i've been asked this a lot uh, why Google rogers <laughs> what does it mean uh you know funny name catchy name uh weird name but yeah it is uh, weird it means nothing so there's no literal sense literal meaning to it but it's a brand it's a meaning that i'm really wanting to create for it so yeah i mean that's the idea behind it and uh, it's a soft word catchy to you know just the way you asked you know everybody asks why gobi rogers and you know what is the story behind it so yeah, this is my little story behind gobi rogers and so far so good 
okay okay great happy here um what what how how you know what did you what did you personally learn you you just wanted to you know end up that uh, space between students and those things so what what did you do you think you learned personally in that phase of you know uh, trying to solve a problem well i'm still learning uh, the most important part is that i'm still learning this is something that you can never uh, outlearn yeah. you know you will always um, there will always be room for improvement and you will always find people who you have never connected with before uh, somebody who just comes in and creates an impact on you as well so understanding problems uh, requires a lot of skills in the sense that you need to understand people you need to be empathetic mm-hmm. uh, you should understand uh, psychology to quite an extent you should understand how people react behave why they behave the way they behave uh, and basically you know try to understand their perspective and okay. give them a different perspective from their own perspective so i think that's uh, one of the things which uh, has been um, you know important to me mm-hmm. and uh, yes it's been a good learning experience so far and uh, so far so good uh, again like i said this is something that never stops uh, you will always in order to understand this gap understand where people are sort of lacking what the kind of problems are it's important to keep yourself in their shoes and understand their perspective yeah. first before giving the solution all yeah. all of a sudden you know it's understanding their perspective and giving the solution from their perspective as well so uh, a lot of things go in you know you have to keep your own ego aside you have to keep your own biasness perspective aside understand where they come from and it's all about being a people's person at the end of the day and uh, like i said it's a learning process you'll always have people who could be challenging for you have been challenging for me and yeah i'm still learning okay okay great um and and uh, what what were the what were the problems you you personally faced in that phase of uh, learning and creating things creating things would start with creating a team for me for myself and okay. for gobi rogers so creating that initial team getting the recruits on board uh, getting the people who again so I, let me tell you you know this is your baby you know when you have your own yeah. startup it's like a baby of your own so the immediate people are apart from you are also its caretaker so you have to ensure that your baby is in the right hands and are also sort of you know they believe in you and they're also uh, they have a vision they are sort of you know they have this uh, synergy and they're able to relate to what you're trying to say so it's important that you find the right people because ultimately you are not the only you know it's not a one man show it's not the only show that that goes around there are a lot of people behind the show and uh, a lot of things happen behind the curtain and that is where uh, finding the right people to help you with the with your project with your baby is important so uh, the initial few challenges for me definitely were around finding the right people uh, getting them on board uh, ups and downs were obviously there found thought that i found the right people but i didn't um, and again like i said i'm still learning and you always become a better judge of people uh, and you still fail but yes you there's always room for improvement and so this was one of the few challenges which i definitely faced okay okay and 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 uh, what 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 do you see in the coming days you know how how things have changed because you know uh, i think past <coughs> sorry so past 6 or 7 months uh, the life was before that was totally different but after yeah. you know 6 or 7 months we are totally into a different thing so how do you think yeah. um, for gobi rogers and how how does things change for yourself also as a as a person who is a speaker a coach and you know um, what 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 things change well uh, what changed for me was that i took a decision of documenting pretty much every session everything that i had mm. on social media which included instagram and linkedin so that documentation process and the lockdown where everybody suddenly moved on to social media and the engagement and the number of people using social media increased multiple times really gave me a push and gave me that reach uh, to pretty much every part of the country right now and so to be honest uh, i couldn't have ask for a better chance a better period uh, than the lockdown period uh, you know keeping of course the negative aspects aside uh, you know it was important for me to also document everything and uh, everybody was at home everybody was more than happy to engage uh, get a new face and um, you know i was more than happy to impact people and so fortunately this is something that i can do even through a virtual call yeah. i don't really have to be in the physical presence i do have to be in the physical presence for for a few kind of things but uh, more m- moreover you know it's important that i can maintain that that virtual connect and i was able to do that 
and i got a wonderful response and it's been a great journey so far like i said 45 plus 50 plus uh, i'm touching 50 now uh, you know organizations institutions across the country only in the last 4 months 5 months mm-hmm. so yes it's been uh, a good journey and the decision of documenting everything uh, really gave me that push so yeah okay, okay. also uh, to answer the second part of your question where you say that where do you see things moving forward uh, to be honest uh, i've always been that kind of a person who looks at a horizon of not more than 2 months 3 months mm. at 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 a time i won't talk about myself uh, you know where do i see myself in 6 months of time 10 months of time that is not what i'm looking at i am looking at uh, the next 2 months i'm looking at the next 1 month what is it what is it that i have in store for the people out there for the next couple of months because then that is where my planning goes in so i i am not um, in that frame of mind where i have to plan for a year from now and post covid era per se yeah. it's about uh, you know being in the present and uh, understanding what people require today and uh, you know trying to give it, deliver to the best of my potential today it's a, so yeah that's about it yeah yeah true true i just agree upon that and uh, before before getting into the you know the main discussion we wanted to have upon i just would you know you were mentioning about linkedin again and again linkedin linkedin uh, optimizing linkedin so what what what's what's about linkedin why you know people like people or entrepreneurs of course they have a serious uh, look over you know uh, view uh, regarding linkedin but people who who don't they don't care and a lot of people even don't know what's linkedin in is so why do you think linkedin is important and what's 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 how how can it help someone so linkedin right now is any other social networking platform mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is giving tremendous amount of reach it's like facebook in 2012 13 and the kind of reach that a single post of yours is able to create because of the algorithm behind it is tremendous so if i am posting let's say a post a day uh 80% 70% of the people who are viewing that post are not connected with me have no idea who i am mm. but linkedin right now has a feature which is basically pretty much open to anybody and everybody it's not like instagram uh, where you can sort of make your profile private and you know just keep it restricted to yourself you can stalk people inside out and that is where linkedin comes in you can go through their profile with without even connecting with them and that reach sort of multiplies because there's a post going out and you are able to connect with people from across the country and uh, they come onto your profile your homework which is basically your profile your profile should be on point your profile should show the professional side and the attitude and approach in life of yours and that is where people connect because today there's an oversupply of of pretty much everything there's oversupply of education technology there's oversupply of of students yes of course uh, and there's you know a very restricted supply of jobs out there mm. so you know when there's a demand and there's this limited amount of supply recruiters have a buffet out there so if i talk if i'm talking about it from a student's perspective it's important to work on your linkedin because today i cannot interact with you physically i can do a video call but why would i do a video call without going through something of yours which already exists and linkedin happens to be that instagram is basically your personal side or your social side your, your linkedin profile is basically your professional side and you have facebook you have instagram you have snapchat you have uh, you know tiktok in a few countries that's your social side but linkedin happens to be the only professional side of yours in terms of the networking platform out there so it's important to you know use that uh, platform to showcase your potential could be a podcaster just like you could be a fashion influencer could be a comedian mm. could be somebody like me who's doing session somebody you know like an entrepreneur who has his own startup uh, is probably you know uh, talking to the world uh, about the kind of startups he's investing in what is the startup about trying to get clients etc etc so linkedin is giving you that reach right now and if you are not on linkedin today i think you are really really stupid because um, it is like i said it's giving you that kind of reach and you're just missing out on something amazing irrespective of what your agenda is it even if you want a job even if you want to get into internships even if you want to have a personal brand you have to be on linkedin it's as simple as that Okay okay great and now moving towards the discussion we wanted to have is how can somebody make impact what's like why, why is it important to make impact first thing and how can somebody do it so um to answer the first part i mean let's just start from why do you have to make an impact uh, i think it's important to understand that 
experience uh, when we say that you've had bad experiences good mm-hmm. experiences mm-hmm. Uh, these experiences impact you okay and an experience does not have to be a bad experience does not have to be a breakup or a car accident or a good experience does not have to be uh, a lottery ticket or um, you know something amazing happening to you it can be just some person some individual talking to you for a few minutes and creating that experience for you that wo kuch insaan aisa bol gaya jo aapko yaad reh gaya a few words you know uh, and the most recent uh, impact that mahindra singh dhoni has created is definitely not the word you know simple two words that he used uh, are you retiring definitely not the impact that it had crazy amount of impact so it's not about those experiences about individuals and people as well and uh, uh, this is something that i've been doing and it's important to also understand that students out there people out there require uh, a different perspective to things and that's exactly what i'm sort of delivering not talking about how to give that impact that's a very tricky thing to uh, to answer to be honest because uh, there's no definite uh, algorithm or a formula to it it's about who you are how you understand problems what you are good at how well can you produce that to that person and how well you can communicate eventually so it's important to communicate as well and that is where the impact comes in you have to understand so you have to have a deep understanding a deep knowledge of what your area of expertise in a very good understanding of what the problem is and then very good communication of the solution that you're providing again like i said it could be a simple webinar uh, you know where you are catering to a problem just like you just mentioned linkedin why linkedin but you know if you're able to understand why somebody is asking that question mm-hmm. what the true answer behind that is and if you're able to communicate it in the right manner yeah. that is where the impact comes in and uh, so yeah this is one of the ways of of creating that impact Uh, where it's also um, like i said understanding the communication process so it could be an instagram reel could be an instagram post could be a story could be a live session could be a podcast just like this yeah. so uh, the modes of communications are different uh, and it's all about communicating at the end of the day so yeah that's how you make an impact otherwise there's no set formula so you have to be good at what you do you have to understand people their perspectives the problem first and then be good communicators okay and and what did you learn f- about impact about making impact you as you are speaker you said have uh been uh, with you know have addressed more than 50 uh, 45 or 40 institutions or organizations what do you what do you think uh how how can somebody make impact and how you think you are making impact and what did you learn from making impact so I, i'll just uh, keep it restricted to my own experience about this because uh, i don't think i'm the right person to sort of comment on how people should be making impact okay. uh, there's no again like i said there's no fixed formula or a set of people or a kind uh, you know or a genre of people who can only make impact that's not true so i won't be talking about that but what i can definitely talk about is the the events or the session which i have had uh, the personal interaction which i've been able to create and have with people okay and it's about that face time which you have you know 15 20 1 hour to a, one and a half hours probably you know 100 minutes that you have with somebody it's about communicating the right thing to them and also to be on the same page you have to match the frequency they should feel that this person sitting in front of me this person who's talking to me who has been invited probably does not even know that my camera is off does not probably know me at all definitely does not know me this is the first time i'm interacting but the communication what he or she has communicated to me in my case what has he communicated to me is it leaving a mark on me has it given me value has it given me that question mark and am i questioning myself or my intention or my process right now that is an impact whether in the right way or in the wrong way if i'm giving a reality check that's also impact if i'm encouraging you to do something that you're already doing and doing great in it that is also an impact but to understand their perspective to be to match that synergy to have that synergy to be so relatable to connect with them as an elder brother as as a senior as a mentor as a professor whatever you want to call it it's important to match that frequency okay. so that is one thing that i've learned um, you know I, i'm not saying that there's i'm perfect at it uh, there's always room for improvement and i'm still yeah. learning like i said you know every session for me is a new session it's yeah. a fresh session it is nothing uh, which i get into with you know over confidence that you know i've done so many i'll i'll be able to man- manage this as well no you have to stay grounded you have to stay so humility is also something that i've learned uh, you know throughout this journey that it's important to 
cater to each and every person as a new fresh face and a problem and uh, i've done that and uh, yes i've learned a lot of things that uh, and fortunately things have gone in my way but that's uh, also because of the process that i followed so yes it's been a learning process it's been a learning journey for me and uh, making an impact uh, continuing to make an impact and will continue to make an impact okay okay great uh and how do you think the young young generation of india because in the, the coming time uh, the youngsters are going to be the the people who are going to change this country right so how do you think right. they can they can impact impact the whole uh, uh, scenario of the country the situation of the country how can they you know impact whatever is happening in the country i think it's important that's a very good question to be honest and uh, this is one question which a lot of people don't really ask and this is where uh, i think this is one question that needs to be asked uh, and answered over and over again uh, and these are the kind of questions that people have to listen to understand and probably inculcate in their lives it's important to use this part of your body okay. which happens to be your brain yeah. which happens to be the top floor of the penthouse of your of your body mm-hmm. where there is an organ inside this skull of yours which god has given you to use it is not there to succumb to false and fake news it is not there to uh, get influenced by something that seems cool uh, to be influenced by your pe- by your friends there is a brain you have logic apply logic question what is happening mm. why is it happening what is the logic behind it reason it out everything has a logic behind it so don't take illogical irrational decisions uh, just because it's happening it's trending uh, or probably you know people around you are doing it because that's one of the reasons and people around you by also mean i also by 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 and i also mean people who you follow on instagram mm. or on or on facebook or on linkedin you know just because somebody is saying something somebody is posting something does not mean that that is correct apply yeah. your brain use your your common sense first get into get get you know, understand the back picture of it understand why is it happening question the thing question the wrong doings around you and then try to voice out also stand for that stand for something which is not correct Yeah. if it's not meant to happen and just because everybody else is doing it does not mean that you will not stand up that's your national duty right that it's not a it's not a it's not a right it's not a mandatory for you but it's duty right and that is what you have to stand up for because like like you said that this is the future generation and this is the generation which is going to lead the country and it is going to be led only with logic good governments the best of countries around today have used logic have been rational in their decisions and here they are so i mean this is where uh, the future generation the younger generation coming in into politics as well uh, i i don't really want to comment on too much politics but yes people are getting into politics they are looking at you know trying to make an impact trying to make it you know have have that a uh, say in the change which is happening or people even you know just like you and me where we're just sitting at home and try to impact as many people in the logical manner you know and yeah. podcasts are something which uh, have you know boomed because of one reason which is uh, that there is logical conversations happening so mm-hmm. it's important that you know you understand logic get to the get to the Uh, the, the the true reality of things and then take decisions by using this penthouse of yours so yeah that's important okay okay and uh, just to, i want to ask you a question uh, if i'm not wrong you are a 90s kid right uh Amma? are, are you, you are a 90s kid if i'm not wrong absolutely yes yeah so w- what do you think do, do i not look like a 90s kid uh, you uh, i just want to confirm you you of course do because <laughs> even if you're 20 or 23 or 20, 90s kid so yeah uh, so what i wanted to ask you is uh uh you 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 would have seen that um your your own self in the 90s kid being a 90s kid you know that a generation of people and how things work that time and now you see the generation of today so what do you think is different from that time to now what's what's the huge difference you think is there well i think the use of uh, of electronic devices and internet i think uh, has is one of those things which has really drastically impacted the way we live today i'll tell you one thing i'll tell you with one thing very honestly you know when i was back in school uh, at a very young age i'm talking about 10 to about probably 15 or 14 or 15 you know my parents up till i'm talking about up till 15 my parents would not allow me inside the house after 5 pm hmm. i cannot be inside the house i have to get out of the house go to the park meet friends play do whatever you want to but get outside your house 
today it's just the opposite mm. parents are not willing to send their kids outside it's okay to watch television all day long it's okay to watch your netflix and chill it's okay to play your video games and online games your ps4s and your xboxes there is no culture for going out cycling around playing badminton in the park just having a good laugh even when people i see this right outside my house so right right outside my house is a park it's a very it's a beautiful park it's a long park and i the kids that come there today are probably what 15 years 18 years younger to me i see them with a mobile phone they are coming out of the house they're sitting on a bench and you know four people five you know kids basically are looking into one screen and how this guy is playing that game that is what you know uh, is the difference between how i grew up and how the kids today are growing up and this is not their fault this is the parents fault right because a kid uh, has no idea what he's doing he or she is doing he's not it's not supposed to be that way yeah right it's just like any language you know if the people are if the people around that kid is are speaking in in, in a particular language or bilingually that kid is going to understand and you know subconsciously understand that and uh, you know learn that language is just like technology where parents are on their phone which is fine but to give that technology and pass it on to a kid which requires to go out of the house get that physical uh, presence go move around play interact with people stay away from technology because eventually it will come in eventually to aapko aana hi padega eventually we also came in right and you're still better off with technology it's not that we don't know technology and we should have learned it while we were 5 or 10 years old it's not like that you know eventually technology will have its own role but till that time it's important to stay grounded it's important to stay away from technology to grow to eat healthy food right it's about uh, going out in the fresh air having that that the morning walk playing with your kids the kids need that space and their upbringing will then negatively impact and reflect Uh, on how things are moving around today you know we are okay with uh, putting them into coding classes and uh, killing their uh, their play time in the evening right which is i think uh, criminal you know if that is the right word i can use uh, i mean i would never do that to i would never i mean i would hate to see someone grow up like that you know where childhood is basically inside the house and you're not allowed to go out and if not allowed but yeah there's your time outside of the house is restricted you know as compared to mine i was pushed out of the house why are you inside the house this is the time to go and play you had your time 8 hours of school or what 6 hours of school you've come back and you had your nap or something like that your friends are calling you go play cricket go play football right go go make friends go fight do whatever you want to that's your time that is where you learn and grow this mm-hmm. is the biggest difference that i see today uh, of the kids growing up today and the way i grew up grew up so yeah that is one of those things yeah yeah i agree upon that point of uh, you know you, you the kids not being at home and using their phones but this this one thing i just wanted to ask you is probably if i if i would talk about um, you know kids kids of your generation uh, there would be a lot of them thinking about when you know at age of 15 or 16 or 17 would be like oh when will i have a girlfriend and all those things but today there is a different scenario uh, there is a kid, there would be a kid of 16 17 or 18 who wishes to has have in his uh, own company who wishes to impact who wishes to become speak something you know so so how do you see that thing as okay so um, i think one of the reasons behind this or probably the only reason behind this is social media right yes. and i'm talking about it in both sense of you know having girlfriends having boyfriends and having a company of your own because both these things are in abundance on social media there are relationship talks there are people who are dating and they're you know uh, posting it on social media and a 14 year old 15 year old kid is also looking at that understanding what is happening at the same time you also have people like elon musk and uh, you know the bill gates of india and of the world uh, where entrepreneurship is you know booming and and start up india and make in india so that 14 year old 15 year old kid is also exposed to that mm. right so it's happening both way okay it's happening both way it's thank you it's thanks to uh, the abundance of social media the access to social media and the internet today and that is why it's happening it's happening both negatively and positively so it's not that um, you know there's a, a different uh, uh, reason behind 
for a kid to get into the the startup culture vice versa to uh, the the girlfriend and the boyfriend and basically wasting time and wasting that uh, that that school time period i think it's happening because of social media and that is where your upbringing also really matters because you will be exposed to all of that you have no control over social media uh, you can put in whatever filter whatever setting you want to you will eventually get onto something that you should not be listening to or watching and you will a kid will be exposed to that there is no control over that but it's the upbringing which will ensure which way the kid moves mm. so i think again like i said you know parents will play a very very important role here and you know i just hope that parents realize this sometime very very soon that it's important to give that maturity to the kid you have to have these talks you have to give uh, and tell them the reality you know to understand reality first and then to give them the reality check that was this is going to happen to you this is what you will be exposed to but this is how you have to manage it so that early maturity has to kick in and you know like you said uh, you know startups and kids are moving towards entrepreneurship which is a good thing right i mean they are they are moving towards a technology science not just in entrepreneurship but you know even getting into product development or design yeah. or graphic design you know they very good with computers today uh, they want to add value to whatever they want to uh, a lot of kids are getting into sports as well you know very full fledged sports why because today we are able to watch sports uh, you know um, uh, as compared to as compared to what 20 years back i was only uh exposed to pretty much just football and cricket and to be and cricket to be on the dominant side but today you know you're exposed to pretty much every sport nba yeah. to hockey to baseball to everything and that is why you know kids are moving towards other things as well so again like i said internet social media the reach the impact but eventually it's the upbringing which will channelize all these things true, true. yeah and also agree to that yeah it's it's um, how you use it because there are there are some who use it in a wonderful way and you know do wonders and there are some who don't use it in a wonderful you know in a proper way of course um, absolutely yeah yeah and and what what would be your message to anybody who wants who wants to do something or achieve something or wish to give something to the society or wish to gain something for him or herself uh well to be honest uh, that's a good question and uh, the only uh, answer to this i just so i just have a couple of answers to this if there's something that you think can add value to somebody if there's something that you like uh it should not be pretentious you should not do something because it's trending or you might just get attention for it because eventually you will reach a point where people will realize that you're faking it and you will not be able to make it for too long and that is where you know you lose so much that you're not able to regain and if you're doing if you're if you're good at something you will have to document it uh, and you will have to understand that you have to have the deepest understanding knowledge and content about it you again like i said you cannot have a superficial understanding of things even if you're good at it so it's important that you know you have in depth understanding knowledge about it um, and the second thing which i would say is something which i've already mentioned uh, towards the, the beginning of the talk where i said you know you have to use your top brain you have to use your uh, your penthouse where you you know logically apply yourself question yourself you know just don't uh, get into something because it looks cool stop sharing things because you know you're also being a part of of spreading the message uh, you know unnecessarily and i'm i don't want to mention these things because um, you know everybody has different opinions about it but i can give you three four very recent examples where people initially thought something uh, was because of something and it turned out to be just the opposite uh, or they had no idea where that came in from um, you know but the damage had been done you know and who had to gain gain out of it so it's important that you understand that you know you're being a part of it use your brain logically apply it be rational with your decisions and uh, you know don't take anybody for granted either uh, and this attitude of you know i know it all and you know there's nobody better than me can also uh, be self destructive so yeah i think these are the few things that you should avoid probably apply and uh, yeah ensure that uh, you know you are doing what you do and but you have to be very very good at it in in terms of understanding and you should have a high self esteem as well so self esteem is one thing that i would really want to keep uh, mm -hmm. uh, and leave the audience with that it's important that you reach a level of maturity that you know that you know you have reached a level where uh, it's okay if you are my competition or if you try to pull me down or you know just bog me down it's not going to work for you yeah. so that level of confidence that level of self esteem is very very important and uh, this is something which grows over a period of time if you do it consciously it can happen you know within a week uh, within 10 days and the result 
and the outcome and the progress that you make after that is is just like compound interest which is the eighth wonder of the world it's just so multifold times that uh, you know in 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 hindsight when you reflect back 10 years down the line will be a happier person so yeah that's about it okay okay uh, so just just ending up to the ending you know just have a questions fast questions to you is uh, first sure. question so what what did you what's the best learning you learned from someone the best learning that i learned from someone all right uh, the best learning that i learned from somebody was that you will never or oh, all right so uh, this my this is something that my nani told me she said that you do whatever you want to do in your life whatever you want to dance you dance you want to be a cricketer you be a cricketer you want to be in the corporate world get into the corporate world you want to teach you teach do whatever you want to but be the best at it mm. do whatever you want to but be the best at it okay that is perhaps the uh, you know the soul learning which has all sort of sort of stayed with me that if there is something that you have to do you have to you know achieve that level or at least aim to achieve that level uh, in order to you know succeed in life uh, and that is one of perhaps the best learning that i've had so whatever i'm doing today you know even if i'm switching roles uh, if i have a different thought process you know i am always thinking about how to achieve the best level of output out of it and this was uh, something that she told me almost what 15 years back 10 years back perhaps uh, of course back in school and uh, has still stayed with me and you know the moment you asked that question i was just uh, referring to you know a couple of other things which i've done but this is perhaps the best learning that i've had okay and what was the worst advice you got from someone A worst the worst advice. advice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the worst advice that I've got from somebody is uh, that you can't lose weight. Okay, so I was a very healthy guy uh, in class twelfth, and uh, I don't know why, but somebody you know really demotivated me and said that you can't lose weight. एक बारी हो गया तो उसके बाद पतले नहीं हो सकते. That was that was the sentence was. That once it's done, it's done. Yeah. And uh, you know I was pretty fat, and you know I just took it really to my heart where I. you know just told myself that ab to khana hi padega because ab to kuch ho nahi sakta but you know that was not the case and um that has a story behind it itself you know how i got into that and the kind of impact just an individual so i was at a party and there was this uh, this this gentleman there and uh, probably what five years older to me at that time and uh, this was right outside right the moment i got out of school so this was around august of i don't know when but right right after school and he was there he was really well suited up uh, you know looking very he had a proper haircut uh, the beard was you know uh, done in a in a very sophisticated manner and he was just looking in control of himself you know you are there you know you, you see this alpha male in the room that's how it was and you know i was that typical you know just getting into the first year of delhi university for semester the typical delhi boy uh, kind of a feeling i was i was having and uh, you know i just looked at myself and i compared myself to him and i said that what am i doing in life mm. you know this is not i would want to look like that you know i would want to have that personality i would want to be that alpha male in the room and that day and today that is one decision i thank myself for every single day because the next morning believe you me the next morning this was at around 10:30 the previous night the next morning i went to the gym at 8 o'clock and i paid the fee for 6 months mm. as a nothing doing ek bari paise de diye to fir ab mujhe aana bhi padega padega so <laughs> that was uh, one decision that i took that from tomorrow you know i just said you know, just uh, just let the night uh, you know end and uh, here i am the next morning I, as soon as i woke up i went to the gym i paid the fee and uh, started working out from uh, from that very morning so that was how it all started and you know these are such small experiences which you know leave a mark on you so yeah. somebody who had no idea who i was i have no I, i don't know him i never spoke to him i just looked at him but the impact so you don't even have to talk to somebody to impact people to answer yeah. one of your previous questions so that is the impact that you know somebody uh, somebody's presence can have on you yeah yeah so yeah this is um, and uh, yeah so that is probably the worst advice which i've ever got uh, that you can't lose weight and uh, yeah i think i've done done pretty well in terms of physical fitness okay okay great great and what would be your advice to your 18 year old self 
uh, whatever you're doing, you're doing absolutely correct. So if I had to go back and tell my 18 year old self, don't just do whatever you're doing. You're doing it absolutely in the right way. Okay. Because the kind of people I was, I was engaging in with, I was, I was talking to, they were the right people. So in terms of, uh, you know, regrets, you know, probably, uh, no. So this is the only thing that I would say that, you know, just do whatever you're doing. You're absolutely on track. Okay. Okay. And then what life will think? find a way life, life will find a way and it did for me. So I don't want to, you know, change the equation now. Okay. Okay. Great. I agree. I agree to that upon. Yeah, of course. Yeah, true. And uh, what do you think you would have done right? Uh, which you would tell others to, you know, not mistake again on. Um, okay. Uh, be early adapters, adopters to technology, be early adopters to technology. As soon as something new comes in, get a taste of it as soon as possible. Try to exploit it as soon as possible. That is something that I haven't done. I'm doing it now, but had I done it five years back, four years back, came would have changed definitely for me. So uh, that is one thing I would definitely say, which includes LinkedIn, which includes a lot of other platforms out there and, and, and micro elements and features on such platforms. So, because they're, they're there to help you, they're there to engage and create that engagement for you. And the, in the era of social media and the internet, everything is there. There's no hiding from it. We're not going back in reverse, right? This is, uh, it's, it's here to stay only to improve. So whatever comes your way now, you have to be an early adapters. You made the mistake, fair enough, but not from now on. So, yeah. Okay. And the last question, top five people you admire personally. So I admire two people and I just uh, keep it to that. Okay. Um, or, okay. I, I can give you three in that case. So the first person is my dad. Uh, the second person is Mahindra Singh Dhoni. Okay. Amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm a, it's not about being a fan. It's about the kind of impact that he's had on me and my lifestyle. And okay. the third person is Gary Vee. Cause I just mm-hmm. feel so connected with the kind of things that he says. Yeah. Uh, you know, the thought process is very similar, very, uh, it's, you know, the synergy is flowing through. It's just the same thought, you know, which I have at times and he's just voicing it out, you know, <laughs> being so vocal about it in its own way, in his own way. And so in such a, um, you know, such an interesting way, uh, which, you know, keeps you glued to him. So, yeah, I think these are three people I really, really admire. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, that's about it. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, so thank you very much it brings us to an end and it was wonderful having you it was great i enjoyed personally the session thank you very much it was wonderful having you thank you thank you thank you thank you lakshad that's this was a really really good interview i must say uh it's been almost 40 minutes but yeah it's yeah. Uh, time has flown by i think the questions that you have uh, put out were pretty uh pretty good and pretty Thank reasonable uh, very very good questions and uh, i'm really happy to be on on your podcast looking forward to the to the recording now and wishing you all the very best i think this is a great initiative which you have and thank you for reaching out on instagram networking this is what networking is all about so yeah i'm really happy you're doing it at a very early age and you have a bright future ahead i'm sure thank you very much and it was my pleasure ultimately to have you thank you very much thank you